It's Monday. Good morning. Hey, Jill. All right. Good morning. Nice. Thank you. It's Monday. Time to get the blood flowing, the mind open. You know, I'm actually going through the notes that I've taken over the months that you've been doing this. Oh, that's awesome. And um, I'm making a list because you actually have a book list and a visit the website list that I'm <laughs> paying attention to. Oh, I love it. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm so happy to hear you getting so much out of this, Jill. Yeah. Thank you, Jill. I have to say you are my constant. You're always here on Zoom every every Monday. Yes, and yes. I appreciate that. So we'll, um, we're going to jump right in. I'm, I know so many of you are watching on Facebook this morning. I'm grateful to you for that, too. Uh, let me know you're here. Put some notes in the comments. And uh, I do go back and see them all later. I'm trying to figure out how to do more than one thing at once. Uh, so <laughs> I'm multitasking. Uh, yeah, that's a lot to ask, right? So I sometimes remember to open Facebook on my phone, and I can look at you guys from there, too. So. I have heard it said once or twice. I'm just going to bring up Monday Morning Mojo on Facebook. Oh, there it is. So I have heard it uh, said more than once that uh, when it re relates to creating an exercise routine, when it uh, comes to building good habits around working out, to never miss a Monday. <laughs> so that when you start your week in that mindset on your routine, it creates an opportunity for you to do it again and have that lasting result throughout the week. So I love that about us and Monday Morning Mojo, never miss a Monday. So whether you jump on here live or you watch the recording later, I, uh, I know I've gotten so much feedback, which really just makes my heart expand. And uh, it really is so gratifying to know that many of you are pulling out some great nuggets from our conversations and uh, applying them in your life. And, and Jill was just sharing that she's reviewing them. And this is a great time to do that because you can really set now a plan for 2021 based on some things that you've been hearing and learning and create intention around what you'd like to do in the new year. So today we're gonna to talk about expansion Every December, I choose a word for the year, right? So every December, I actually learned this from uh, reading a blog by John Gordon. Um, so you may want to check out John Gordon. He's great. Um, and he really shared with us the ability to manifest great things in your life and to start by choosing a word that would be a theme for your for your year. And so I usually sit down and um, we were talking about this with my husband yesterday, and I just meditate on it for a, a good 15, 20 minutes. I just try to clear my mind and let the word come to me. And so last year, my word for 2020 was expansion. And um, I can share with you that I definitely have seen lots of opportunity and lots of growth and things have definitely expanded from my, my business to other things in my personal life. And it's been, um, despite everything else, it's been a good year. And I'm, I'm excited to say that. Um, so that's what I wanna talk about. My word inspired me to create a message for you this morning around expansion. And uh, to start off, just so that, you know, for those of you who want to take some notes or want to really get into this, expansion is defined as the action of becoming larger or more extensive. So in order to expand, we have to be willing to grow. And growth will always increase our capacity. And with that increased capacity, we increase our potential. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. So I'm going to start out with this question. When do you max out on your capacity? When do you max out on your capacity? When do you reach your full potential? How do you know you've reached your full potential? Is it possible to max out on your capacity and reach your full potential? The answer is no. And thankfully, the answer is no. 
So that's probably why we like to gather together in this venue on Monday Morning Mojo because we want to learn how to expand and we want to learn how to really break through our own level of capacity and potential. And I think that honestly, we don't have a clue as to what our limits are. We can't even measure really our full potential. I mean, tell me a tool out there that would allow you to measure your potential. There isn't one because I don't think we can actually measure it. So interestingly enough, when someone is pursuing a dream that they have, um, they, they will instinctively push through past their own limitations and potential in the pursuit of that dream. So therefore we know that this is so possible. And I think that our potential is limitless. And I also think it's untapped. <laughs> I think that um, we will not ever see what, how vast that unpotential, that, excuse me, that untapped potential really is. And I think living a full life, living a fulfilling life is really always to be in the pursuit of maxing out on our capacity and our potential. And I think that as we push towards that, we will understand more about success. We will gain more knowledge. We will understand and develop more leadership and we'll actually increase our effectiveness. So I want to talk to you today about expanding your potential, expanding your capacity, and that will require you to do a few things. The first thing it's going to require you to do is be open to changing your mindset. And when we understand change, we know that it requires us to think differently. In order for us to see change and for change to do its work and bring in greater opportunity, we have to be willing to think differently. And that also means that we have to be willing to approach life differently and look at things from a different perspective. You know, um, research has proven that any one of us, the human, the human being, probably only taps into about 10% of their own potential. 10% guys, that's incredible. So how can we get out there into the wild frontier that is our, our untapped potential and start to claim more of that for ourselves? So I wanna share with you a couple of ways that I think you can do that. I wanna share with you this morning a few really tangible uh, practical tips that will allow you to increase your capacity, expand your potential, and really I think set the pace for having a year in front of you where you can achieve greater results. So when we change the way we look at things, we instinctively have to understand that that means we are going to change the way we do things. So the first thing I wanna to talk to you about this morning, um, uh, again, these are a few easy steps to expand your potential. Number one, so if you're taking notes, write this down, number one, Work smarter rather than harder. <laughs> Hard work is not <laughs> always the key. Jill's giggling and I love it. Tell me what you're thinking, Jill. Oh, it's easy to work hard. It sure is. Oh, that is pretty um, profound, honestly. It is easy to work hard, isn't it? Yes. Because we can just like say, oh my gosh, I'm just putting my head down, putting my nose to the grindstone, right. busy, 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 busy. Right. But busy is not always productive. Right. And that's really the difference between working smarter rather than harder. So hard work, I, I know many of us were raised, you know, with these work ethics. I was. My parents, I adore them. They came here from Italy. My dad was 25. My mother was younger. She was only nine. But they came with this work ethic, right? And they were taught and programmed to believe that the harder you worked, the more rewards you would receive. And it's such a valiant effort and thought. However, I think as we have evolved our thinking, we realize that working harder is not always going to make us more effective. It is about working smarter. And when we work smarter, we increase our capacity. And I think that when we work too hard, we can actually reduce our effectiveness. So it's really about working smarter so that we can be more strategic. Because as we develop those um, strategic options and think with strategy, you know, then it, it, it really helps us to look at what is the fastest, easiest way to get there. 
And so that will increase our capacity. And I think that when we get clear about what we need to do, again, that comes with developing strategic options, then we can be more decisive about our approach. And then we can get really clear about how we use our time and how we focus on the most important tasks. So the, the key then is to figure out what works and what doesn't work. And my friends, the definition of insanity <laughs> is doing the same thing over and over yeah. again and expecting a different result, right? So that's, that's a key piece too, if you're taking notes, write that down. Get into the habit of examining what works and what doesn't work. Um, Gary Keller, uh, the founder of Keller Williams, uh, in his book, The Millionaire Real Estate Agent, he talks about red light, green light. And what that means is just taking a time out to assess, take a time out to say what's working. Okay, let's see if I can continue or even improve upon that and expand upon that. What's not working? How do I shift gears, right? So that we're not just doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. So we have to figure out what's working, what's not working. So in order to do that, you have to be willing to do two things make time to review and assess. And the second thing is to ask those powerful questions of yourself, right? Ask the powerful questions that will allow you to really look at where you're putting your time so that you can focus your time on those activities that will bring you the greatest result, right? So that you get that return on your investment of time. All right, so the second uh, tip I have for you in uh, our topic today, which is expanding our potential. So whatever it is that you set out to do, business goals, personal goals, financial goals, weight loss goals, relationship goals, how do you really increase your capacity for success and your potential so that you can break through to a higher level? So the second thing that I have for you this morning is to stop saying, can I do it? Or, sh or I should say, stop asking yourself, can I do it? And eh. I want you to change your thinking, right? We want our thinking to empower us, not undermine us. And the minute you say, can I, you are alluding to the fact that you do not have permission, right? Can I, can I have a glass of water? Well, maybe yes and maybe no. So it's really about knowing that when you start that statement with can I, it is, it is limiting you, it is holding you back. Stop asking yourself if it's possible and instead ask yourself, how can I? How will I make it so? How will I get there? Anytime you start that question with can I, it assumes your doubt. It assumes you are seeking a permission or approval from someone or something to do it. But when you start the question with how can I, your brain is immediately seeking information on what to do in order for you to have what you're, what you're looking for, right? It's automatically on a journey to figure out how to get you where you need to be, how to get it done. The effort of seeking that information itself will help you develop strategic options and that will help you expand your capacity and your potential. So it's automatically doing exactly what you set out to do. So a major element of the how can I approach has to start with belief in yourself. So I think that when you are, are taking the time to say, can I do it? You are immediately showing some doubt there, right? So we have to realize that in order to really get into the, into the practice of saying, how can I, it means that we have to have belief that we can figure it out. We have to believe in our ability to think strategically and that even if we don't have the answers, we have to believe that we'll figure it out or find someone who can help us with that information, right? So it's really about the belief in yourself because you can't be on a quest for answers with a negative or limiting mindset. You can't be on a quest for knowledge, for answers, for information, if you're gonna tell yourself along the way that it's not possible or maybe it's not worth it, right? So that negative perspective is gonna stop you in your tracks. Your belief in you 
and your perseverance is what will make progress. Your belief in you and your perseverance is what will make progress. So by changing your beliefs, you will change your thinking. All right, the third uh, tip, I guess I'll say, or, or perspective I have for you on changing your, or excuse me, on increasing your uh, capacity is, is don't put all your eggs in one basket. By the way, uh, don't put all your eggs in one basket has a, they don't know, I believe from what I've read a few times now, it's as old, it, it's something that we've said since the 17th century. And of course, it refers to what can happen if you put all your eggs in one basket and you should drop that basket, right? You're out of luck. So same thing here. I think that when you consider your options and you consider possibility, and you realize that it's not just one, one thing or one road, you're expanding your potential right there. So I would like to encourage you to look for multiple ways to achieve success. Success is not linear. Success is like this, it's squiggly and all over the place. So when you look for multiple ways towards your desired outcome, you get more inquisitive. Your curiosity will feed you. You're, you're going to look for multiple options. And if any of you know me, many of you do. Hello, Megan. I'm so happy to see you this morning. It's like romper room. Some of you aren't old enough for that. But remember, you used to wait to hear her call your name. Yeah. So, Megan, I see you. Good morning. So, if you know me, you know I love options. If you've ever traveled with me, you know I love options because I usually have way too much packed in my suitcase. Um, so, I like that. <laughs> I like options. I like choice. You know, we call that choice. I yes, always have to have choice. <laughs> choice. Exactly. I don't want to be boxed in. I don't yeah. want to be boxed in. I don't want to be limited. I like choice. I like options. And I seek options in my pursuit of my goals because it gives me more control of my outcome. So I want you to think about that. I want you to explore your options. I want, I want to encourage you to raise your curiosity, ask more questions. There's always more than one way to achieve success. And that is going to expand your potential and it is going to give you the ability to achieve success at a much higher level. Because in the pursuit of options and choices, you experience creativity, you experience adaptability, and you increase your odds of success. So don't be afraid, don't be afraid either of failure, right? Because I think some people subconsciously um, push back on having a lot of options because they want to control the environment a little too much because they may fear that they may fear failure. I have to tell you, my loves, failure is part of success. Without it, you don't learn enough to really achieve a high level of success. If you are always playing it safe and small, you might convince yourself that what you're doing is bringing in success. And it, it probably is to some measure, but if you want to change your world, you have to be okay with a little failure. It's kind of like a cha-cha, one step forward, two steps back, two steps forward, one step back. That's part of the, the, the journey of, of success. So we have to be more comfortable with that too because success is only achieved with continuous effort and movement. Remember that success is only achieved with continuous effort and movement, which is why I opened up this morning with never miss a Monday right? Because that creates your momentum for the week. Okay. Number four, I want to talk a little bit more about action. So increase your capacity for action. So I, I, I told you that, you know, all of this really starts with our beliefs and changing our beliefs and our thoughts is crucial, but it can't stop there. Once you start to shift your beliefs and your mindset and your thoughts start changing, that has to inspire different action. And it has to be about action. You have to be in movement, right? So we have to, to really look at what are the activities we're focusing on every day. So when we look at increasing our capacity and really stepping into more of our potential, then we have to take a look at what are we doing every day. And we have to ask ourselves if we are doing things that really align with our strengths. And if so, that's, that's good. But are you intentional about developing your strengths more? 
are you intentional about becoming more masterful on the things that you're already doing well, right? Because the pursuit of mastery is also going to bring you to high levels of success. So when we spend a lot of time in, in areas that are just not naturally our strength, we're, we're wasting time. I would rather you look at how to leverage your weaknesses and really look at how to develop more of your strengths because that is really the key to breaking through the next level. Now, when you do, uh, in contrast, now I'm going to go in a little different direction. Now, in addition to developing your strengths, I'm going to encourage you to also look at what are some new things I can try that line up with my strengths that would be a natural progression of my mastery. What are new things that I can try, new things I can do, new things I can apply in my dip, in my business, uh, in my, in my uh, workout routine, whatever the goals are. Because when you do new things that align with your strengths, that will increase your capacity. And that will also increase your effectiveness. So doing new things leads to innovation and it leads to um, creativity and it leads to progress. And it really leads you into that frontier that I said was that 90% of your potential that's untapped. So expansion means leaving your comfort zone. Expansion means le leaving your comfort zone. And these actions that we're talking about, of course, must be consistent and daily. And it's about those actions really being in your 20%. We've talked about this before on Monday Morning Mojo. It's understanding the 80-20 principle that says there's this predictable imbalance to the things that we do. In other words, only 20% of the activities that you could focus on every day will actually bring you 80% of the results you seek. So it's about getting super clear on where you should put some things aside and how you should focus more of your time and energy on those 20% activities, because that's what's going to bring you bigger results. So, so that's the clarity uh, that will help you increase your capacity for action, right? It's all about taking action. So we talked about a lot of stuff this morning. I just, before I give you some action steps for the week, I, I see there's a couple things in the chat from Jill. And if any of you have any thoughts or questions, let me know. Um, yes, Jill, I'm gonna share what you wrote here. Beware of distractions. Yes, they are everywhere. And that's a really important concept too with the 80-20 principle. You, you, when you identify your 20% activities, you need to defend and protect the time that you need to get those things done. And distractions are gonna show up and they, um, uh, there's a saying that Diana Kokoska from uh, MAPS Coaching says, distractions cause failure. Distractions cause failure. As soon as you allow yourself to go off course, you're, you're gonna be um, off course in terms of the results that you're looking for too, without a doubt. Well, Jill, um, so you'll be doomed. <laughs> yeah. So Jill and Leslie are asking pretty much the same question, and I'm, I'm so glad you did. So they wanted some, some clarity around what does it mean to leverage your weaknesses? So I think that, uh, number one, understanding your strengths and weaknesses is key to really developing self-mastery, right? Because in, in anything that we do, we're talking about developing mastery here. If we don't understand ourselves and if we don't master ourselves the way that we uh, the way that we communicate, the way that we think, the way that we work, our strengths or weaknesses, uh, then we're we're kind of trying to to do what we're doing without having the, the guidebook. So I think understanding your strengths and weaknesses is crucial to understanding yourself and mastering yourself. And so there's a lot of assessments you can take on that too. And, and you know, if anyone wants more information, I just reach out. But once you are clear about what your strengths and weaknesses are, what I'm saying is uh, sometimes people spend a lot of time trying to improve upon their weaknesses. And as a coach, personally, I don't coach you there. I coach you to get clear on your strengths and let's really become a ninja over here. Let's master these strengths, keep doing what you're good at, develop mastery. And the stuff over here that you're not so good at naturally, there's a reason why you're not good at it. So leverage is, is basically getting help, right? That's what the term leverage means. 
Um, so where can you get help in the area of your weaknesses? Because I do understand that for some of the, some of you, those weaknesses or the things that you're just not so good at still need to happen in your world, but it just might mean you don't have to be the one to do it. Right. So if you're running a business right now and, um, you know, like we look at bookkeeping and accounting, it's, it's, it's probably none of us, it's not our, we're not masterful in that, right? I mean, I can balance my checkbook and I've got my personal life on a budget and I have my business on a budget. I can read a P&L, but you know, like really being an accountant and a bookkeeper is not my thing. So I hire to that rather than trying to take the time to learn it or to try to fumble through it. And maybe I don't make, uh, maybe I make mistakes and it's not super accurate. I hire someone to help me with that. So if you can leverage your weaknesses, it allows you to spend more time on your strengths. And as you spend more time on your strengths and develop more mastery and successful outcomes, you're probably making more money too. So if anyone's thinking that would be great, but I can't afford to hire everyone to do all the things that I can't do, you could, if you move the time away from that into your, your strengths and, and figured out a way to get compensated for that, you can hire anyone you want to do everything you you're either not good at or don't want to do. Trust me, because I've done it in my life, right? So, so that that's what I mean by leveraging your weaknesses. Does that help? Cool. All right. Here, here are some activities that you can focus on this week to bring this to life uh, in your world. So, a couple of thoughts I had. Number one, you might want to journal a little bit on on the following questions. So, if you want to write these questions down. These are some great thought starters for you. You may want to journal on this question. If I knew I could not fail, if I knew I could not fail, what would I attempt to do right now? If I knew I could not fail, what would I attempt to do right now? If I had no limitations, what would I like to do? If I had no limitations, what would I like to do? I've heard so many people say, oh, one day I would love to fill in the blank, but I can't because there's, there's no limit to your thinking, then there's no limit to what you can create in your life. So ask yourself, if I had no limitations, what would I like to do? And the third question, if money was not an issue, if money was not an issue, what would I be doing with my life? If money was not an issue, so either if I didn't have to keep making the money I'm making or if I didn't have to worry about having the money to invest, to start, or whatever it is, if money was just moving away, what would I be doing with my life? Make some decisions around the answers that are revealed by those questions. Is there an opportunity in this coming year for you to start working in, in a direction that really connects you to your dream? Yesterday on the Facebook page, I said, always make sure you order your dreams in a size too big so you can grow into them. Always make sure you order your dreams a size too big so you can grow into them. Get clear on the 20% activities. I can't talk about that enough. I have learned the hard way how important that is uh, to get clear on your 20% activities, time block for them and make them a priority. Protect that time. Don't allow excuses to take over. Don't make your own excuses and just focus on those 20% activities because you will see when you do the other things in the 80% become so less important, maybe non-existent, and you create a much bigger life for yourself. And then the, the third tip or, or the third um, action step you might want to look at based on this conversation Take a personal assessment on how effective you think you are. Ask yourself some tough questions about that. You know, how effective am I? How do I spend my time every day? How much time am I spending on my 20% activities? Am I getting results? Have I moved the needle? Am I really working at my highest level? When you're brave enough to ask those questions and reveal the information, reveal the, the answers will reveal information about how to get to your next level, right? So remember the, the greatest project you could ever start in this world is you, is really the project of developing your self mastery so that you can increase your capacity and your potential. 
So any final thoughts from you guys on, on what I talked about this morning? That's all I got for you today on a Monday. That was wonderful. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. That was quite a bit. I guess the next phase is when you try all these wonderful things, what do you do when you do journal and you can't quite make it? So that would be an interesting uh, discussion. Well, well, so that's a couple things, right? So I think mm. there's always an opportunity um, for us to get clear about what we need to, to get to the next level. And sometimes what you need to get to the next level might be a coach because as you sit in your own thoughts, you will make allowances and you might be too hard on yourself one day. You might be too easy on yourself the next day, but a coach can come in with a very different perspective. A coach is going to come in from uh, that, that sense of wanting to contribute towards your goals and, and partner with you to get you where you say you want to be. And, a, and a, one of the biggest elements of coaching is accountability. So we are, you know, as a coach, we are making sure that we're helping you stay on track. So that could be one uh, element. And I think that, um, you know, it's also, it's also about being honest because you have to be willing to get to the deeper root of the problem with yourself and with your coach too, um, because that, that information is really what's gonna move you forward. So when you feel like you're getting stuck, it might be, okay, why? Like what's really getting in my way? So a coach is a sounding board plus more than that, I gather. A co yeah. So, um, to, you know, there's a coach for many different areas of your life and the coach that you work with in your business is not necessarily the same coach you're going to work with in your, at least not in my case, I'm not going to be your workout coach. I need my, I need that myself, <laughs> right. right? I'm not going to be your fitness coach. Um, but a coach does a few things. A coaching is a partnership, um, and a collaboration based on what you want to accomplish. So the coach is going to start out by asking you, what are your goals? What would you like to accomplish through coaching together? And so then we get clear about what the goals are. We figure out how you're going to get there. Uh, sometimes the coach, with your permission, can act as a consultant and give you more information rather than just ask you some questions. Mm. Uh, but a lot of times coaching is, is self-discovery, is, is giving you an opportunity to tap into that potential because I believe you do have the answers. And as a coach, we believe that you are capable. And mm -hmm. so we're just allowing you the space and the support and the accountability to really develop into that. And um, a coach can help you remove your limiting beliefs. A coach can help you develop better habits, higher levels of effectiveness. But at the end of the day, you're doing the work, right? So similar to, I'll use a sports analogy, uh, the coach is there to, to teach the fundamentals of the game and to drill them on it, to help the, the players get out on the field and run the play blow the whistle when necessary, right? Call a timeout when necessary, regroup when necessary. But at the end of the day, the coach is not the one kicking the field goal or running running the ball down the field, right? It's you, the player. Um, so the players get the glory. The coach is just in the background helping you to achieve success. At least that's how I coach. Um, so that, that may be an opportunity for some of you in, in the new year. Many of you work with coaches now and I'm sure you have great stories of how coaches have changed your life. And that's really, you know, mm. why I love doing what I do is because I get to be a witness to transformation all the time. Got it. Thank you for sharing um, that. Because it's always been a vague term. Everyone uses, oh, the term, but, you know, over time, like you say, people use it for different reasons. Yeah, well, listen, if any of you guys um, watching this and at any time would like to have me do a mojo on coaching, like what is coaching, types of coaching, because that may be a goal for yourself, the um, myths around coaching, how to hire the right coach. I mean, I, I'm happy to do that. So um, if that's something that would interest you guys, let me know. And, and any topic that you want me to talk about on Monday Morning Mojo, let me know, because that's what this is about. It's for you and for you to get something valuable out of it. So I, I would love your ideas. So, all right, everybody, it is 8.05, and I have to get on to the next thing. I got to protect my 20%. There so, you go. everyone, have an awesome week. And Thank I will you. see you guys next Monday. All righty. Enjoy. All right. Take care.